How's it going, everyone? We are quickly coming up on the release of one of the more anticipated games of 2024. And I don't know if going into this year, you would have put it among the top most anticipated games of the year, but I feel like as this year progressed, especially after that great state of play where Stellar Blade had an amazing showcase, the anticipation and the hype for this game has exponentially increased. And among 2024's biggest games released thus far, I would seriously put this game in the mix as one of the most anticipated. Now, as we're getting closer to the game's release, I want to go over all of the information that you should know before you spend your $70 on it. Or if you do want to spend a little bit more, there is a digital deluxe edition that's a little bit more expensive. It's definitely not necessary to pick up, but uh, certainly we'll go over it at the end of this video as well. Right off the top with Stellar Blade, gotta say this is a brand new IP. So there is a free demo that is available, which I think is a great route to go if you're trying to have a new IP pop off offer a free demo and with stellar blade seems like these demo numbers have been absolutely staggering and if you have yet to play the demo if you're on the fence about the game go play the demo it should give you a nice idea about the game some people seem to really really enjoy it others think it's a good action rpg you know a little bit of a taste before we get to the full game but make your own opinion play the demo and you should have a pretty good idea generally speaking of what to expect out of the final game now if you've been following this channel, you know that what I often say is one of the hardest things to do in gaming in the modern era, and that is for a relatively unknown studio in the console market to come out with a $70 game that is a brand new IP and have it pop off. We've seen game after game after game coming from an unknown studio, being $70, and it just flopping from a commercial standpoint. With Stellar Blade, it really seems like the hype and anticipation and all of the elements are coming together for this game to be a success even as a new IP. Now, while I say unknown studio, shift up while unknown to a lot of the people that are mostly in the console market or PC market, they have been around for a pretty long time, going back to December of 2013, and they've created a few mobile games. This studio's first project was the 2016 mobile title in Destiny Child, then they ultimately did also release The Goddess of Victory, that has a PC release as well, but Stellar Blade is their very first console big budget AAA title. And it is coming exclusively to the PlayStation 5 for now. Uh, it will be interesting, obviously, with this being a PlayStation published title. You would have to think that ultimately the game will come to PC. And initially it was actually scheduled to come to PC as well, but then PlayStation got the publishing rights and so on and so forth. It will be a PlayStation 5 exclusive, at least for the moment being. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the game, let's go over a little bit of the background. The future of humanity is balanced on the edge of a blade. Ravaged by strange, powerful creatures, Earth has been abandoned, and what is left of the decimated human race has fled to a colony in outer space. After traveling from the colony, Eve, the main character who has obviously been the star of the show when it comes to the promotion and hype of Stellar Blade, she arrives on the desolate remains of our planet with a clear-cut mission to save humankind by reclaiming Earth against the malevolent force that is devastated it. But obviously, things are not as easy as just jumping down and saving everybody as Eve tackles them one by one, piecing together the mysteries of the past and the ruins of human civilization. She realizes that her mission is far from straightforward. In fact, almost nothing is as it seems. It's a thrilling slice of razor-sharp action engaged in blisteringly fast combat as you slash a path through the remnants of Earth in an all-new action adventure on PS5. On these graceful yet brutal attacking combos, then graceful is a really good word to describe the game. While it does have its visceral elements, I think the game goes for a level of style, elegance, and beauty, and no, that extends beyond just the main character. I think also with the gameplay and the execution of said gameplay, uh, it has a level of elegance that you don't see in a lot of just gruesome action titles which obviously both can work, but I think for the style of game Stellar Blade is going for, gives it a little bit of a unique flavor. Unlock new moves throughout the game and weapon upgrades and face epic boss encounters that will challenge both Brain and Brawn in equal measure. It's obviously going to be an incredible visual experience being a next-gen only title. I say next-gen, we're four years deep into this console generation, been a little bit of a habit. Become immersed in a highly detailed post-apocalyptic world that blends beauty and horror to spectacular effect. Explore breathtaking science fiction and 
inspired environments brought to life via the graphical power of the PlayStation 5. It's a deep, unforgettable adventure. Unravel a gripping human fate story with mature themes, a thought-provoking narrative, and emotionally charged revelations from beginning to end. And with the PlayStation 5 being the console of development, experience cutting-edge game performance with rapid load times and support for immersive features, including the DualSense wireless controllers, haptic feedback, and adaptive triggers, and Tempest 3D audio tech. Obviously, with it being on PlayStation 5, some of you guys are probably a little bit curious to know how the game is going to run. You're going to have a performance mode at 60 frames per second. You're going to have a resolution mode that's going to target a resolution of 4K and a balance mode with a balance between the two previous modes. I think that's a perfect route to go. Personally speaking, for an action title like this, you ideally would want to play the game at a higher frame rate, but you know what? Whatever you want to do, that is going to be up to you. And options are what we always like to see and having three options for the performance settings like to see that quite a bit. The story centers around Eve. The protagonist finds herself in a devastated world where she meets Adam, a survivor left on Earth, and Lily, a member of a previous airborne squad. Yes, while Eve is all over the promotional material and is certainly the star of this story, there are in fact other characters in the game as well. Together, they join forces in battle against the enemies. Along the way, Eve's party works with the surviving citizens gathered in Human's last city. You've got a world connected in a semi-open world region called the Wasteland and the Great Desert, which harbor many secrets. You get to cross paths with many different people and go on adventures. Obviously, you're going to have the main story to go through, but there will also be a level of side content to jump into. Now, as far as totality and content, they are saying about 20 to 25 hours for the main story. And if you are looking to do everything, that can extend the experience all the way from 30 to 50 hours. Obviously, that's a significant range. I would imagine that the 50-hour range would be... Uh, those of you guys that are really taking your time trying to take in everything for the game in 30 hours would be more so for the people dabbling in the side content, doing some of it, maybe not all of it, uh, but ultimately we'll see how that is executed in the final game. But they are saying 20 to 25 hours for the main story, which me personally, I think that's great. Not every game, just because it's $70, has to be uh, focused on offering the most amount of content possible. Obviously, there have been other $70 games that may have been seen to skimp you out on content, but 20 to 25 25 hours, a little bit longer if you're looking to do all the content. I would rather an experience that is all killer, less filler, especially for a title like Stellar Blade. You don't want padded out content for a game of this style, and I think a 20 to 25 hour campaign, maybe even a little bit shorter than that, and sometimes when we get these ranges for the main story, a lot of people are beating it slightly quicker, even if you're looking at 18 hours. I still think that could offer a great experience. Throughout the adventures as Eve, you will pick up items like exospines or gears, as well as acquire SPI EXP, which unlocks powerful skills. You can also acquire various cosmetics. Obviously, the cosmetics have been one of the key talking points. You'll have costumes, accessories, and hairstyles. These are cosmetics, but there is also uh, the caveat of the skin suit, which, let's just be real, a little bit more on the NSFW side, but at the same time, makes the game quite a bit more difficult, which I actually like uh, the utilization of that I think you're taking the NSFW element and you're actually having fun with it and I just find that to be amusing as all hell and players will hear a wide variety of music in this game guys expect the soundtrack in this game to be great you're gonna have a lot of vocals attached to it as well and all of this will be exploring uh, throughout the world from relaxing tunes to the camp uh, to the music that captures the poignancy of a ruined city almost all the songs have choruses and vocals which will immerse you into the world of Stellar Blade a couple more details to note as far as DLC for the game. There will be free content updates after the release of this game. You will have free cosmetics being released, more suits and accessories will be released on that front. On top of that, there will be a free update for New Game Plus. New Game Plus is going to be coming sometime after the release of the game. This seems to be something that's relatively common in PlayStation game releases. Spider-Man 2, God of War, Ragnarok, no New Game Plus at launch ultimately came out after launch. I don't think that's the biggest issue in the world. Would it be nice to have it at launch? Sure, but me personally, I like to play through a game. Usually don't do my second playthrough right off the rip. I usually let it simmer for a little bit. And hey, when New Game Plus, when that update drops that revitalizes interest in the game, gives you a reason to circle back. And with Spider-Man 2, they drop New Game Plus with a couple of costumes. Could they do that with Stellar Blade? I feel like that makes all the sense in the world, but that's just speculation on my part. As far as microtransactions go, you guys know how I feel about microtransactions in a single-player game. Not a big fan, and Stellar Blade will not have microtransactions. The form of paid DLC for cosmetics that they noted is if they decide to do crossovers with other games. And if you're doing crossovers with other games, totally can understand 
understand that. I'm sure there's some sort of licensing agreement, a partnership fee. I don't know exactly how the nitty gritty works, but let's say they do a crossover with Horizon and they make an Aloy variant costume uh, for Eve. That's all in-house with PlayStation, but I would imagine that PlayStation would want to monetize that. I don't know the nitty-gritty, but when the idea of crossovers were brought to the table, I was like, okay, if you want to monetize crossover content, I can understand that. And I also feel like that will be an absolute haven for them to print money. And they're not fundamentally altering the design choices of the game, so I'm actually pretty okay with that if they do go down that route. Listen guys, if you watch this channel, you might know that I crap on some of Ubisoft's practices with DLC and microtransactions. It's not just a blanket idea of I crap on DLC nonstop. If it makes sense, if it's worthwhile, if it's something that's an accessory to the game, by all means, uh, it can be something that is an extra layer of monetization for the game. It doesn't hamper the player's experience. And ultimately, it's fine. So uh, we'll see how that comes to fruition. If it gets a little crazy, obviously I'll make note of that. But at this point, I like the ideas that I'm hearing uh, as far as Stellar Blade is concerned. Lastly, I do want to note, the game is going to be priced at $70. However, there will be a Digital Deluxe Edition. It's $10 more. Nothing too crazy as far as the Digital Deluxe Edition. It's only $10 more. You've got a couple of suits. The Stargazer suit for Eve. The Half Rim glasses for Eve. A quadruple rectangle earrings for Eve. Stargazer wear for Adam and Lily. Stargazer pack for the drone. 2,000 SP, EXP, and 5,000 gold in-game currency. Pre-order details. In addition to buying the game, if you do ultimately pre-order the game... You will receive an early unlock of the Planet Diving Suit for Eve, Classic Round Glasses for Eve, and Ear Armor Earrings for Eve as well. So if you want to check out the Digital Deluxe Edition, certainly not one of those Digital Deluxe Editions that's offering you, let's say, a $40 Season Pass baked into it that's going to offer you narrative content. That is not in Stellar Blade's Digital Deluxe Edition. Uh, so, you know, it's $10 more. If you want to check it out, by all means, go for it. But I think most of you guys are going to be fine with the base game. At the end of it, I do want to recommend you guys go play the demo. That should give you a good idea on whether or not this game is going to be up your alley. Excited about the game as a whole. A single player, narrative base, action RPG. You've got some pretty good character design, if I say so myself. I don't think I'm going out on a, on a limb by saying that, and I think I can appreciate some good aesthetics. But at the end of the day, the gameplay needed to be good, and based on the demo, it seems like this is a game that, as far as action games go, action RPGs go, we're going to be able to sink our teeth into. The game officially releases on April the 26th, just a little bit of a ways away. Let me know all of your thoughts on Stellar Blade. Are you excited for the game? Are you going to pick it up day one, waiting on a sale for it? Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.